What's up guys, it's Nick from Part Time Pilot. Uh, another video for you guys, this one's gonna be all about the equipment under the hood. So we're talking about engine equipment, what makes the engine run efficiently, and what you gotta check in your pre-flight uh, flight. And then we just did a, a video on aircraft equipment, general aircraft equipment, like control surfaces and stuff like that. So if you wanna check that out, you can click up here. Uh, but let's get started. Okay, so here is just a, a general uh, overview of the engine system. We have a picture here. So uh, the cylinders over here, there's four cylinders on most general aviation aircraft. Uh, you should know how many cylinders are on your on your aircraft engine. And they are located here, two on each side of the engine. And then uh, going into each cylinder is a spark plug. And there's actually two spark plugs we can't see here but two spark plugs into each cylinder and there's some on the bottom as well and these spark plugs these come from the magnetos here so you have a magneto here right magneto and left magneto um, so each magneto sends one spark plug uh, to the engine and you can see that over here in this diagram so you have the left magneto right magneto the green lines are from the right magneto. As you can see, a green line goes to each uh, cylinder, which are these red things here. And uh, and then a blue line, which comes from the left magneto, one of each goes to each of the cylinders, and that's for redundancy, so that if one magneto go, goes out, you're always gonna get a spark uh, from, from one of them. Um, and then, let's see, we have the engine case, casing, which just is this part right here and the magneto wires, which uh, we already talked about. All right, so now let's kind of show you what that looks like on an actual aircraft. So here we have uh, the engine casing, which we talked about, uh, these little things here. So when you put the cowling on and the skin of the aircraft, this uh, baffling is what this is called. This kind of rubber baffling keeps the flow of air in here uh, to help cool the engine. Uh, and without that, the, the flow will just escape and it won't go around all the cylinders. Uh, so it's very important to have good baffling. You got these type of hoses here, which are like this hard, shiny rubber. And then you have these hoses here, um, which are different sizes. So the ones here that have these little springs in them, circular type, almost like an accordion, those are for airflow. And then you have these like harder rubber ones which are in, which are highlighted in green, that's for uh, fuel and oil. Okay, so you'll see these hoses on some of these images and stuff as we go through, um, but that's a good way to know what's air and what is uh, oil or fuel. So here we have the engine cylinders right here, and then we have two on the opposite side uh, for a four-cylinder engine. Uh, and then we got the spark plugs, which we talked about. Um, here and here and here uh, uh, going in to the the cylinders and then coming to the magnetos which are right here in the back which you can't see we'll show you another picture and then you have uh, exhaust pipes so exhaust pipes coming out of the cylinders here right so the cylinder you know, you're gonna have intake and then exhaust, so the exhaust lines come here and they come into this shroud here. And then you have the intake, uh, which brings air into the engine. On the intake stage, those go into each cylinder and you'll have two of these, it'll look the same on the other side of the engine. All right, and then so to get a good view of the magneto, I needed a new picture. This is what they look like here. Um, and then you can see it sitting right back here and the magneto wires on this picture are actually disconnected. You can see them kind of hanging off in this engine. Um, but the top ones here are going in to the spark plugs. And then these ones down here are hanging off. These will actually plug in to the spark plugs right there. And again, there's another magneto on the other side right about there. Um, and again, both magnetos supply a spark to both to all of the cylinders all right so now that we've talked about the magnetos and kind of the spark of the cylinders 
let's talk about the starter starting system. Uh, so in this diagram here, we'll see that there, there's basically a lead to the magnetos from the battery, and there's a lead to the starter, uh, which looks like here, this assembly here. So when we turn the ignition switch, uh, basically we send a charge to the magneto so it can start sparking in the cylinders. And we also, there's a solenoid. Uh, once that's activated, when we turn the key, it's gonna charge power the starter. And when the, power, the starter is powered, this gear right here uh, pops out and locks with the flywheel, which is just a bigger gear. And it, the starter's job is to start the spinning of the propeller and the flywheel. So when the fly, fl so sorry, when this gear spins, the flywheel starts spinning, and then the propeller starts spinning, and that will start our combustion. It'll start our intake and outtake of uh, using crankshafts, which we'll we'll show you in a sec. But the intake and outtake stages of the pistons, and then when you combine that with some fuel and air intake and the and the spark from the magnetos, that's how it gets started. And it's all predicated on this starter starting to spin the flywheel. And that starter is powered by the battery when we turn the ignition switch. Okay, so uh, this is a six-cylinder engine, a very fancy-looking uh, high-powered engine. Um, but um, this is the best view I could find of sort of the starter here, the starter assembly here, and then you have the starter gear here, and then we have... Actually, this should say flywheel. Sorry about that. Flywheel. Um, so this big one's the flywheel, small starter gear, and then again the starter here. I don't want to go too far into detail on this because we have a video specifically on how the engine works. Um, but I want to mention uh, how this integrates into the starter, uh, the internals of the engine. So we have the flywheel here that's kind of sitting behind what we're looking at here. And then we have the, the starter gear here. So when the starter gear starts spinning, again, it spins that flywheel and it causes, again, the propeller and the propeller shaft to spin. When that propeller shaft spins, the crankshaft and crank rod turns that rotational motion into translational motion. They come in and they come out and they do compression and decompression inside the cylinders and that combined with fuel, air, and the spark from the spark plugs uh, will cause you to get combustion. That's when the engine turns over and you have a good engine start. Okay, so now uh, attached to the spinning assembly of the prop is a alternator belt. And we didn't have this in our diagram. So, but when the flywheel spins and the propeller spins, uh, it's gonna run this belt. And this belt is going to make this alternator wheel spin and the coils, magnetic coils inside the alternator are gonna spin, and that is going to produce us electricity, which then powers, you have lines, electric lines that come back into the cockpit, powers systems in the cockpit, uh, and it also powers, uh, charges the battery. So we're using the, the circular motion of our propeller and with magnetic coils in the alternator to power our systems and reach, keep our battery charged. Okay, so uh, and these are the general locations. This is a very rudimentary diagram, but these are the general locations. You're gonna have uh, the alternator here next to uh, the cone right in front. So you can have that belt there. And then you're gonna have leads to uh, the battery here to charge the battery. And then you're also gonna have leads uh, going into the primary aircraft bus, which then distributes uh, current to all the systems in the aircraft. Okay, so we talked about how our engine is air-cooled, right? Air flows in, it goes over the cylinders, and actually these little, uh, this pattern here is again to help with cooling on the metals of the cylinder. Um, but the engine is also cooled by oil. So oil is for lubrication as well as it is for cooling uh, the aircraft. And so here are some of the parts uh, that you'll wanna check, make sure there's no you know, leaks, damages, um, or anything like that in the oil system. So you have an oil filter, which filters out any debris in the oil. And then you have an oil cooling air filter and box. And so the oil is also cooled by air. So we get air coming in to this air tube here, into the oil cooling air filter, 
and then we also have oil coming in and out. Uh, so hot oil coming in, it's getting cooled, and then cooler oil coming out and going also through this oil filter before going back in the engine. So before it goes back into the engine, it gets cooled and it also gets filtered of any bad debris. Now that we've talked about oil, let's talk about briefly the fuel system and we have a complete video up here that you can click up here right now on the fuel system. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but right here we have a low, low wing uh, aircraft. So we got the tanks down here, comes in through the fuel selector valve, depending on what uh, it, it's set by the pilot. It gets uh, filtered by the fuel strainer or gas escalator. Uh, part of it can go straight to the primer line, which can be directly injected into the engine, which we'll talk about. Um, but then also you're gonna go through the pump system here, um, which most general av aviation aircraft are gonna have an electrical fuel pump, which is kind of your auxiliary fuel pump, as well as the engine driven fuel pump, which runs off the engine and the electrical fuel pump runs off electricity. And then finally, that pump system is gonna pump fuel into the carburetor here. And then the carburetor is going to suck some air in and uh, mix it with the fuel and it pulls it up into the engine. Where are these parts on an aircraft? Here again, we have a four cylinder. Uh, we have our cylinders here, aircraft. And this one, as you can see, it's good for viewing because there's no tubes, right? There's no orange tubes, so there's no air tubes or oil or fuel tubes. So it's a little bit easier to see. You can see, um, looks like the oil filter back here, this white thing, and then you have a magneto. So we can see a little bit more things here. Um, so we have our carburetor right here sitting under the engine and again the fuel goes up fuel and air goes up into the cylinders from that carburetor uh, and then we have a carburetor air intake right here so we're going to have on our cowling of the aircraft we're going to have a air hole right here and air is going to come in and then it's going to come all the way in into this carburetor air intake and then as you can see, there's a hole right here. Um, so this is for an air tube. So what air tube could that be? Well, that is the carburetor heat intake. So again, we'll show you where that comes from, but basically warm air from a shroud around the exhaust will come in into the carburetor uh, when we have the carb heat on and it'll heat the carb uh, so we don't get carb icing. And then here we have the fuel strainer or gas escalator. Um, so that's what that looks like. And then if we continue on, we have an electrical fuel pump. So this is kind of hard to see where this is at, but this is sitting right here. Uh, and again, all aircraft are a little bit different and especially the ones of these images I took, but usually you're going to have like your gas escalator. You're going to maybe have like a, a fuel sump down here, and then you're going to have electrical fuel pump kind of housed separately in a protective little spot like it is here. Again, so you can sump fuel from here, and then we have the electrical fuel pump right here. So that's what that looks like. And then we also have, again, we have a line of air just to cool these systems in here. And then here we have fuel coming out uh, right there. And then the engine driven fuel pump, again, this is hard to see, but this is gonna be housed somewhere, somewhere down here um right next to it because it's driven by the engine it's going to be attached sort of to the back of the engine um, but it looks sort of has this sort of shape and then again you get you got fuel coming in and out of the engine driven fuel pump all right and now we talked we mentioned briefly mentioned the um primer line so here you can just see it um, the primer line is going to be directly injected into kind of hard to see, but into the intake, um, into the cylinders uh, from the aircraft. And then also on this one, you can see here, we kind of have the little, the sump area. You can't see the electrical fuel pump on here, I don't believe. Um, so on this aircraft, the elect electrical fuel pump is gonna be somewhere else. All right, so here we have another picture of a different angle. Again, uh, just a, another like homing engine, uh, four cylinder. Um, but this one is a good depiction of the carb heat shroud. Um, so we already talked about these exhaust pipes, right? The exhaust pipes are going to have very hot air in them, so they're going to be warm. So there's a shroud that is placed around 
these exhaust pipes and when air comes past these it's going to be warm so we direct that warm air down here into this box for the carburetor and that's when we have uh, when we have our car beat on there will be a little valve in here which allows that air to come in into our carburetor and heat our carburetor so we don't get carb ice. And a couple more things uh, that haven't mentioned yet that you'll always check um, right here so you'll open the hood and there's going to be a brake fluid reservoir. It's just a little tiny can usually and usually it looks just like this. It's this little tiny black can with a little twisty top and you're just going to twist that open and check to make sure that it's to the, the level that you need it. Um, and then another thing that's usually housed in this area is going to be the starter solenoid, which we mentioned. You know, that's connected to the battery. And when you turn the ignition, the starter solenoid and these electrical wires are going to go, they go to the starter up here. And it's going to power that starter up so that that starter gear comes out to the flywheel and can power that flywheel here. Uh, for a good start as we talked about before Okay, so that is a general brief overview well, not too brief But a general overview of the aircraft engine systems parts uh, that you'll want to check uh, Before every flight uh, you'll want to look for fraying in 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 the wires You want to look for holes in the wires bad connections of things uh, leaks you want to look for oil leaks and and fuel leaks underneath along the wires at connection points and all that stuff uh, and you want to make sure that uh, your engine is good to go uh, before flight um, so hopefully you enjoyed the video if you have any questions as always follow us on instagram at part period time period pilot or facebook at part dot time dot pilot one and then youtube you're on our youtube so please go ahead and click and subscribe uh, so that you can enjoy our videos and hopefully it helps you study uh, for those upcoming exams and check rides. So thanks for watching.